Hello, and thank you very much for attending this course about how to define your target readers and buyers. Book Selling University Course 101. It's the basic course that's really important for every other marketing technique or a book that, and that you will be using because this is something that really defines all your marketing efforts and even perhaps the content of your book. So my name is Brian Judd. I am your instructor for this course. and I have a lot of experience in book marketing on both sides of the desk. I was the uh, former vice president of marketing for Fortune 250 company. We got involved a lot with different market segments and creating marketing campaigns directed to them. I've written several books on marketing, on special sales strategy, both talking about the concept of targeting your, tar your, your readers and buyers. So we'll continue now with some information that hopefully you'll find very helpful and help you sell a lot more product and be more successful in your book marketing efforts. What to expect from this course? Well, first of all, how to define your target readers and buyers. These are the readers are the people that generally the consumers that will buy through retailers. And they are obviously looking for information, not necessarily buying your book, but they want the information that's in your book, and, and whether it's fiction or nonfiction. And this information applies to both fiction and nonfiction authors. The buyers are the people that are in the corporations, associations, the schools. The, it could be the distributor. Or you may even consider the, the publisher as a buyer, and they're always looking for information about your target market too. So it's critical for all layers, all aspects of the distribution channel. Then certainly you want to talk about how to organize these people in groups because the you can't market to everybody. You've got to be able to define them and then organize them in by their, their needs, by the way that they purchase. The retailers, for example, will buy through wholesalers and distributors where the corporate buyers will buy directly from you. And then they have different reasons for buying, different ways of, of or different needs for your book. So that is the uh, the second step. And third, we'll look at how to create a market map. Once you have everyone set up in these groups, then you need to be able to find the individual buyers or to create a list of the individual buyers in, in groups before you start going. I think book marketing is as simple as pie. <laughs> if you look at that as an acronym where you plan, implement, then evaluate. So the part of the plan is creating this list of the target readers and deciding how you'll reach them with your uh, marketing mix and then implementing that mix and then evaluating the results. And you may be, need to find different target groups to buy, or, buy in larger quantities or buy more frequently, as we'll be talking about. So let's, let's get started. <clears throat> a buyer will go into a store and pick up your book and it could be a gift shop, it could be a bookstore, it could be an airport store, it could be a supermarket, it could be a camera store. But they are looking at, you'll pick, they'll pick up your book and they're thinking, should I buy this? I've never heard of this person before. Is that person qualified to talk about the topic? My friends have never mentioned this book, which is a, a reason why you need to be setting up word of mouth advertising or stimulating, I should say, word of mouth advertising. And wondering if that 1995 price is worth the my effort for paying for it and then reading it. So you've got to look at the different people. They're, they have different needs of different buyers. They're looking for different information, different benefits from your book. So they buy or they don't buy for their reasons. So you need to find out what those reasons are. So why is a target definition important? Well, to find out what those reasons are. And you really need to know your potential buyers. You can't say, my book is good for everybody, because how would you reach them? How would you let them know? How would you show them or tell them why your book is the appropriate book or the best book for their, their needs? So you have to know who they are and look at that, the five W's of who, who they are, what they buy, where they buy, when they buy, and why they buy. Then in other book, uh, book university, book sell university courses, we'll talk about how to do that how, I and mean, how to actually sell to them. Today we'll talk about how to uh, do the, the definition portion of that, of that plan. 
Then look at the four P's. Remember back in your, your marketing courses, the four P's of marketing, the product, the place, the price, and the promotion. The product could be any variable form. If you have an older demographic and for your target reader, maybe you'll have a, a large print version. Or if it's a, a Gen X, Gen Y, millennials, maybe you'll have uh, your marketing, maybe more mobile marketing by using a telephone. So the, the promotion, the, the, where you have your books available, if your target readers shop in, 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 in airport stores, if they travel a lot, or if, they, if they go to libraries, or they go to bookstores, or maybe they go to, to pet stores, well, that's where you need to have your books. So that, that will influence your distribution decisions too. And pricing, will, there are various levels of pricing and discounts you can offer for these people. So the more you know about them, the more that you can implement or, or uh, make uh, this assorted marketing mix more practical, more effective, more efficient for each of the target groups. And the ancillary benefits of this is that you will include that information in your proposal to a publisher or to a distributor or to the non-retail buyers like the corporate buyers and associations. These people want to know, is your uh, target reader applicable to them? The the, the Retailers, they want to know if the your 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 book is appropriate to their target their their customers. So the distributor will ask that question of you, as will a publisher, as will a producer of a TV or radio show, that they want to know if your content is appropriate and applicable to their audience. So the more you can define this, the more you can expand all your your uh, marketing opportunities. Why don't authors target their market? Well, <laughs> less time, this is the way that authors see their books. They're, they're, this is their life environment of family and job and home and book. And you've been working on this book for years, perhaps. And it's a big part of your life. But the consumers don't look at it that way. They've got their own problems. <laughs> They've got their jobs they're worrying about and their car problems and, and their kids in school. And if they think about your book at all, it may be part of the entertainment or maybe when they, they have a problem arrive, they want to lose weight or gain weight or want to save for retirement. They want to be a better parent to have better relationships. Well, that then it becomes a problem that they want to find a solution. So at that point, they may look for the solutions and your book would be one of those. But it's not a big part of their life. So you've got to look at your marketing plans as the consumers would. And that's the the essence of what we're looking at here. You can say, say use the so what test when you're thinking about this. I wrote a series of job search books. So I would say, uh, I wrote a job search book. So what? It shows you how to find a job. So what? It shows you how to get a job more quickly so you'll be employed more, more quickly and you'll have your revenue coming in. Oh, now I understand. So that's what you want to talk about. You just use that so what test to find out uh, what is important to these, these buyers. And then you make that happen. So how do you define your consumers with the five W's? First of all, who are they? Again, you're not marketing to everybody. You need to find out who the readers are, who are the people can who can use your 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 content, your information. And we're talking a lot about that content, that we're not selling books. We're selling the information in the book, the benefits, the reasons why people will buy it. It could be for fiction, maybe just entertainment or just some way to spend time after the kids are asleep. <laughs> So it's 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 the the content that we'll be discussing, and so that's what they're buying. They're they're buying the information that's in your book, not the the pages and ink. Where do they shop? Maybe their parents. Maybe they're shopping at toy stores or pet stores. If they're career people, maybe they're looking more at the, they're traveling more into air, in, in the airport stores or cruise ships, or they maybe they they, they do buy books in libraries. I sold my job search books to bookstores initially and found out that people who are unemployed don't, don't go to bookstores and, and buy books. They go to libraries where they can get them for free. So I started selling the books in libraries and sold a lot more that way. Why do they buy? What's the content? What's the benefit? What's the, the information that's in your book? Is it just they want to they have a flight? They're at JFK airport and they're flying to LAX. They want a, a, something that's going to help them pass the time. So they, they'll look in the bookstore for that, or maybe one of the other stores that's on the airport uh, concourse. But they want some some benefit. Maybe it's they're on their way to a vacation. They want a book to read on the beach. So your fiction comes up again. Or they want to uh, learn how to take care of their baby or, or, or a pet. 
So whatever that is, they, why, they, that's the reason why they will buy your books. And when do they buy? Is it a seasonal buy? Is it something that they buy when they're traveling or, or for around a holiday period or for, as a gift? So the more that you know about this, the more that affects your distribution, that places in which you'll have your book available. And also when you have it available, when you're doing your discounts, because you don't want to discount it when they're at a peak buying period. So let's get started here. Let's start with the, the five W's of who is your target reader. And this is one of the handouts you will get with the course. And it has information to help you define your primary target, perhaps even secondary target. That could be a, an additional uh, buyer or someone who's not in your immediate audience. And we'll talk about all these. But maybe look at, at the gender. And typically, women buy more books than, than males do. They're more, they're more likely to purchase the book. So, But it may be directed towards that. But a, a book about uh, football may be... Uh, for women, we have one of our clients has a book of, about uh, football terminology specifically for non-football fans. But say that your, your your target market is women. Well, you may say I market to all women, but different groups have different different needs. So let's assume that the, the younger group, they're college grads, or they're they're out of high school, or they're at their at a trade school, or just they just got married, and their parents. They, they could be work at home moms or dads, or they, or the, in this case, you, you define it as women for your target uh, market. So it might be you know, how to be a better mother or how, how to be a better, uh, how to be a work at home mom. But you think about we, where these people will be shopping. So you know about their, their age group and they know some obviously will be starting a career and I'll address that next. <laughs> but let's assume that they are parents and they're, so they might shop in, in supermarkets and maybe gift shops, but in gift shops and parks and zoos and museums. So that's where you want to have your books. If they're taking their kids there, that's that's where you want to make sure that your book is available. Or it could be in toy stores or, or kids' furniture stores. And if it is, maybe you'll contact the manufacturer of, of baby's cribs and have them buy your book in large quantities. And then when people buy their crib, they get a a a free copy of your book on baby care. Maybe it's a hospital. If they, when the mom comes in there, it has the child, and they give the mom a, a departing gift, which has lots of different samples of different items in it, the pampers and um, powder, and, and and your book about how to take care of a baby. Or it could be a manufacturer of strollers or whatever uh, item would be appropriate for the kids. And it might be for pet stores or for uh, educational stores, if, if, like this Discovery Toys, Inc., uh, perhaps pharmacies or dollar stores. If it's a really maybe you have a little booklet that's that's appropriate that might be saleable uh, through dollar stores or warehouse clubs, the Costco's and BJ's. They may, uh, may be shopping at, at Walmart if they have less disposable discretionary income. Maybe they're looking for the bargains at the dollar stores or at Walmart. So they may have less time for shopping. So they're looking at buying through home shopping networks or buying more online or through catalogs. I won't go through all these. You can see these. But I just want to make sure that you get the, the feeling of where this target segment might be approachable or where you need to have your books available. Could it, Maybe in, in schools or in the teacher's lounges through collective goods or uh, in education, uh, uh, child care centers, daycare centers or book clubs for kids. Uh, maybe that the using a book as a premium for the uh, the PTAs and as a fundraiser, the work at home moms maybe contact the or, or have your book available through the Families and Work Institute or the Home Business Network, and uh, it could be appearances on niche TV and radio shows. But find out the appropriate shows where your 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 target readers will be. And then the print media, maybe get a review or you might write articles for Parenting Magazine or You and Your Family or Working Mother or Home Business Magazine. These are, again, for that reaching that target segment. But maybe that your, <coughs> your target segment is for the little older uh, woman who's uh, an empty nester or the, the, the kids are gone or, or maybe she is into... Uh, the career, even if the 20-year-old the might be into in a career. So these places would have applied to that 
person also. So you can see what these are. You can maybe in gift shops, but instead of parks and view, zoos and museums, you're in gift shops and hotels and airport stores and on cruise ships and Hallmark stores for the empty nesters. Or maybe the grandparents. And, and do, so you're getting on their books in Hallmark stores on Grandparents Day. The specialty stores are, would be a lot different. Instead of Walmart, maybe you're at Macy's or Neiman Marcus and doing bookstore events at those places, in which we set those up for our, our clients too. Online bookstores would be different. It could be at Successories or Franklin Covey or CEO 800 CEO Read. It's a, see, it's a different, you're doing the same thing as far as being online, but you're di in different stores. And the same thing for the, the getting reviews and getting distributors that they're different people and, and different companies, I should say. Alumni associations might use it as a fundraising item instead of a PTA. Uh, the YPO, you might be a speaker at, at Vistage. Uh, you're getting into the, uh, the niche libraries. And so instead of public libraries, maybe you're in a law library or a business library in a, in a corporate library setting. So you can see these that the you're doing, you're getting re awards and reviews, you're getting on TV and radio shows, but they're different shows. So these are just different uh, ways in which you can segment or create those or market to those particular groups. General income, we talked about it. If it's a lower income, you're in Walmart instead of Neiman Marcus. The education level could be, well, that might dictate the, um, the vocabulary that you use, the location, obviously, where you want to have your books. So we looked at all these. I just gave you examples of how all these could be uh, defined and depicted. So just go through that. So you know where they shop, why they buy, what their problems are. I'll show you in a minute how how, how to de uh, define some of these or how to find some of these. And it was why your book is better and why they, they, should, they should buy it and why you think they should buy it. Then look at, at the potential retail buyers as a customer. This could be the, the, the chain stores. It could be the Barnes & Noble or it could be the online bookstores. Or it could be uh, niche uh, target retailers like the uh, airport stores or uh, Lowe's for home de for hard uh, hardware store. Ace Hardware Store might have your book if it's about home repair. The national retail chains like the Walmart and the Target. So the the general problem that all these retailers have is they want more store traffic. They want more people in their stores because if they come in there to buy one product, they're likely to buy other products too. So the action step is that you are doing a lot of promotion that will generate the store traffic. And the result is that the the retail store is more profitable. So that's that's what you want to talk about when you're doing your proposal to, to them. Where the non-retail buyers, the corporations, associations, they're not looking for necessarily store traffic. They are certainly looking for profitability. But they may want to sell more of a product. They may want to introduce a new product. They may want to enter, enter a new market. They want, so they, want, they want to create a sales campaign to do create some, some buzz. So the action would be that you have that information that can help their increase their sales and result that they're, they're more profitable. And so that, or they, it could be the HR managers not looking for direct profit. They're looking to motivate their employees and to reduce absenteeism and make them more productive. So the end result is a more profitable corporation, but they reach it in a different way. So you're marketing to the sales manager in a different way than you are to the uh, HR manager. And you want to establish yourself with uh, your credibility or your education credentials. Certainly, if you write these out, then when the the the, the retailer or the corporation or the, the the woman or the person at the gift shop is buying something. They'll say, instead of saying, I wonder if this author is the right person, is the most uh, credible source on this topic. Well, they, they'll know that because they've seen that in your, your marketing, that you are the, that's why I started this, this web, this class out with a description of my credentials to hopefully build a little more credibility for the content that I'm bringing to you. And then you can have it your, when you know your, your target readers, what they want, and, and if you know how your content can deliver it, you can create that branding that you're known as the the top person in your profession. But use the sentence, I help who want get. I help the people in my target market, now that you know who they are, get a particular benefit or who want a particular benefit, get that that result. 
for example, my, my job search books, I help unemployed people who want income get a job more quickly. So that's something very quick. You can say that on, on, on a TV or radio show, the host says, tell me about what you do. I help who want get. So that you talk about your 30 second, 30 second elevator pitch. That, that's, that's pretty, pretty quick. But it also makes you the, the professional, the, the person who has that credibility. Not only do you have the credibility and the education and the experience, you also are able to articulate that properly. So here's an example of, so say you have a book on, on buying a home. You can go to this website that has information about online searches, about who's buying online, when do they buy, why do they buy, how about first-time home buyers? Are they different? So if you have a, a, a book about how to get a home mortgage, or then you want to know this information, or a book about how to create a uh, buy furniture on a budget, well, that's something that then you want to be able to know where those home buyers are looking. If you are the real estate, uh, selling the real estate or the realtor, you want to know where your potential people are. Are they using the phone? Are they, are they, using, are they doing their searches online or on their phone, or on the computers or on the phone? And video usage. These are, if you find that you can reach these people, that shows the demographics here, that if, you know, if they're going to YouTube, uh, home, they're going to uh, looking for online videos, that's, so then you need to create the video for that. The demographics, you know that 73% of, of senior home buyers go online. They may be looking to downsize or looking for a condo or in a, an apartment. So that if you have a book about how to downsize financially or, or happily, or maybe the dealing with uh, an older uh, parents helping them. So the idea is that the more you know about where, when, and why, and how they buy, the more likely you are to reach them appro uh, appropriately and effectively with your your marketing. So it's just an example of how that can work. Now the the real key, not a real key, another real key, I should say. You've defined your, your primary target reader. Let's, let's look at the secondary or even tertiary uh, target market. See, what this question does is expand your opportunities. You're creating more potential buyers, and, and so you're selling more books. So instead of selling, just putting your books up on Amazon and waiting for people to go there, you're taking this initiative, and you're, you're going to them and showing them how they, they can solve their problems with your, with your content. So you're asking yourself, who else can use my content? Who else needs that the information in my book? So here's the way you're finding this new content here that you find who, where else do my typical buyers look for in my content? So instead of asking you know, where they, they, they do what you want to ask that, but you're asking where else they look for your content. So you, you, you can find that out, you know where they'll be buying and where they, where, that's where you need to have your books. So it could be in, in libraries, but not necessarily public libraries, maybe religious libraries or the uh, school libraries, or maybe it's the, the pet stores. So instead of having your, your books available just in, in toy stores, maybe have it in pet stores too. So you know, where else can I reach my buyers, my typical buyers? So you, that expands your opportunities. Now, who else could use the information in, in my book? I wrote my job search books. I was thinking about the fact I wrote this for the typically un unemployed person. But, the, but when I was doing marketing and, and, and TV and radio shows, I would talk about, or think about college students, about blue collar workers, about women, uh, career opportunities, the high school people and Hispanics. I actually wrote, a, I had my job search 101 book translated into Spanish. And it was the non-competitive book in that for many years in the, in the Hispanic marketplace. I sold a lot, tens of thousands of those books because I asked that question, who else? So if you have the, uh, the cookbook, well, maybe it's for single parents or for uh, people with no kids or, or, or maybe just the uh, uh, married couples living alone, too, eating for two, or maybe the empty nesters that they don't have their family at home anymore. The idea is you're thinking, who else could use the information uh, in your book? Where do they look for information? So now you have these people that are looking for, for a job. So instead of just selling to unemployed people in general, I would go to the, the military and 
find out the, or I did find out that they're looking for information to, to help the spouse of the service person who's changing jobs every couple of years, help them find a job all the time, or the service person who's leaving the, the, uh, uh, the military, help them find a job. I got a call from a prison librarian one day, and they said, the prison, the librarian said they wanted to buy my job search book. And I said, why? I said, well, prisoners got out of prison. They wanted to teach them how to get a job. And I never would have thought of that. So I was thinking, you know, where, who else, where else, and how he can contact these people, contact these people. Who could act as a decision influencer? Maybe it's a, a counselor. Maybe uh, if you could sell, instead of selling your, your book on on uh, divorces to, to, to divorce people, go to the counselors where you can ha sell more uh, to a defined marketplace. You can reach them through your direct marketing and you can uh, have them just buy books in large quantities and then they would give them out to their, their clients. So they would be the decision influencer on that, or it could be the, the uh, the counselors uh, in high school that would t counsel these students on how to get jobs, and they would they would buy my book in quantity, and get, the schools would buy it in quantity, and just give it to the, the students. So these would be the decision influencers, who uses or could use your book in, in large quantities. This is a really a, an important thing. I, I found that with with state governments <clears throat> that. I, I created some booklets for college students that they didn't want to spend fourteen ninety five for a book. So I, I took a chapter out of my chapters out of my my full length book on resumes and cover letters and interviews and created small booklets from that. And so I so I sold these to the colleges and they would if they bought them in ten thousand or more I would imprint their their college logo or name and logo on the booklets for them. And then I changed the word student to citizen and sold the same booklets to state governments. There are several states that when people signed up for their unemployment benefits, they got a, a, a bundle of my booklets all shrink wrapped, which we sold them to them shrink wrapped. And they had to watch the video that I did about the art of interviewing. Uh, so so at, at interview. So I, the state governments, they would buy these 10,000 10, 10, at a time. So I was printing these 100,000 at a time. And I got a very nice uh, printing, low printing cost as a result. That was just by asking that, you know, that question, who can buy in large quantities? What information about your customers could lead to a new product form? Uh, how could the delivery of your content change? Maybe you could send, sell it as a seminar. Cor corporations may want to, want to buy your book, your content, and have you deliver it as a seminar or a workshop to their employees. So these questions, and this is a handout you'll be receiving for taking this course, and this will stimulate some ideas about how you can expand your opportunities by finding new places, where they, when they buy, what and how, why they buy, and that's going to give you a lot more opportunities to sell in larger, larger quantities, just, just selling more books. Where do they shop? Or where do they work? Where do they associate? It could be the parents. It could be there. I showed you where they'll be shopping at different places, and the the idea is that this is going to influence your distribution. If you have, if you're selling to to retailers, to bookstores, to non bookstore retailers, selling on online, selling online, you may or may not need a distributor. But if you're selling online, obviously, like Amazon would be your distributor retailer. So the, the personal selling, you're, you have a non-bookstore, non-retail, the corporations where you don't create distribution to them, you do that personal selling, but you don't have to do it yourself. You can find <clears throat> rep groups that will sell for you. Uh, that's my, my business, so that's what I do. Uh, we sell books to non-bookstore buyers. So you can find an agent, a rep to do that for you. But the thing is, you have to know where they shop and how, how you can reach them. If you know you would need distribution to dollar stores or pet stores, well, that's where you have to make sure that you are, are doing it, getting that distribution. Where do they look for information? So, you know, where, the, the, you ask the two questions, two wares. <laughs> where do they shop and where do they look for information? So, say you have that, that book on for uh, home buyers. Let's, we want to find out where are some good places in which to do that. So, you might come down here and, and find out that the first time buyers are more likely or the highest number of these people are in these states. So you may want to start out with your 
your marketing, your distribution into these places, maybe doing more TV and radio shows in these states. Or they, look, if you have a book on vacations, finding vacation homes, well, you're doing your, uh, your, your radio and TV work, or maybe setting up the, the stores in, in Florida and the, uh, or the, maybe the airports that fly to Florida. That would be a great thing, having a, like Delta Airlines, having them offer the, your book to all first class passengers when they get on the, on the plane. There's a, your book is sitting on, on their seat. Maybe the same thing with any airline flying to, to, to Florida, to Oregon, or to Dakotas, or Carolinas, or Ohio. This, the idea is that you, once you know where the people are looking for your information, that's where you want to have your, your book. So look, they, this gives you a quick idea of how you're promoting to them, of distribution, of the mass media, of story events, of sales presentations, publicity, advertising. See, these all are different. This is the the media mix, the promotional mix that you have that reaches these people where they're looking for information on your topic. So you want to promote where buyers are. So see, you have a book for work at home moms for that the 24 to 40 year old work at home moms, and you say, well, I'm going to get on the Today Show, and so I can reach four million people. Well, only a small percentage of those people may be in your target audience. So you might be better going to a uh, the home business network and having a, a half hour show on the home. Not you know, the half hour show. You can be a guest for a half hour on the home business network where a much higher percentage of your target readers will, or target market will be there. So that's, that's, that's the, the, the idea that where you want to be where your buyers are and where they're looking for information on your topic. Now, look at the five W's. What do people buy? Well, you may say, well, they're buying my book. Well, probably not. Your book is just paper and ink. So they're not going to buy little pieces of paper and ink what they want to buy is the benefits of, of, of when i read your book and this is what you're you're projecting that they can be sitting on this uh, beach looking out over the the pacific the atlantic the caribbean the mediterranean whatever and just because and then your book will help them experience that and get that so when you say what do people buy that's what they're buying. They're, they're buying the the benefit of, of your book. <laughs> but they also you want not just the benefits, but also you want to have the right form, which they prefer. These are all out of print, so I'm not selling these, these products to you. I just want to demonstrate what I did to provide the form in the manner in which the people wanted it. I wrote the Job Search 101 with a general how to get a job book, but I had trouble talking about how to gesture about what proper posture look like or eye communication or facial gestures or that uh, that was so i did the art of interviewing which is a video and then the, the booklets that I, I did for the 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 college students that that these that uh, i did these for the college students but then also sold those to the state governments this book i used for my personal presentations where i was doing a uh, a workshop and it was a, a spiral bound book that people could would lay flat, but just about the ABCs. So I go through that of finding out these, the AB, very, uh, very basic information about that. And, but it was very good for a workshop and the ebook of getting your words worth during an, a job interview. It was very, just, I was able to get the form in which the people wanted it. And so I sold more about it. See, the content was the same in every one of these. Not identical, obviously, but very similar. It did not take a lot of rewriting. It just took a lot of repurposing and putting it in a different format, a different uh, form, so they would get it in the form in which they, they wanted it. So when do they buy? Well, they want to buy when maybe around holidays, around graduations, about Mom's, Mother's Day and Father's Day, or maybe they're getting ready to go on a vacation. We took our family to Hawaii one year, and it was at least a year in advance. We were finding the best places to go and getting the best deals and, and the, getting the, the, the flights and getting everything together. So it, it was well, but that was for a particular event. It wasn't. It was for a, a vacation, not necessarily a holiday. But the idea is if you, you want to coordinate your marketing with the 
events around your content. So here's something that this, this is March. And if you go to this website, holidayinsights.com, and it, it goes by month, it gives you the, sort of the major holidays year long, garden holidays. If you have a book on gardening, <clears throat> then you, you want to click on that. And the major holidays, you might have a book on how to cook Thanksgiving turkeys or how to put a Thanksgiving dinner together or a Thanksgiving party together event. So if you have, you go to this, have this book, this will help you get on the media too. If you have a book about uh, baseball history, well, you can talk about, maybe get on the air on March 8th. Or if you have a book about the, the Girl Scouts that they were founded on March 12th. So you tell the media all about these, the, these uh, events. So you get on the air and, and you're talking about your book, how it is associated with these things. So every month, every day, almost every day, has some kind of event that is uh, it's different, it's special, and, and you can tie in your content with that event and be much more successful doing that. So why do they buy? That's something that, that there are benefits. We talk about this a lot. This is very critical. People are not buying the book. They're buying what the book does. You need to be able to differentiate that. They want the results. They're buying for their reasons. The old concept of find a need and fill it. That's the best way to come for the new book is to find out what's, where, what do people want to know. And, uh, for example, what I did when I was writing my first book, I went to Borders. This is before Amazon. And Borders. And, and I went to Borders and Barnes & Noble and went to the career section and looked at the different shelves and and so the alphabetical by author so I thought where would Judd be on there so here I saw where it'd be what what books would be near me what are their topics what are the, their prices what do their what do they cover what don't they cover uh, what do the covers look like <laughs> what what colors are they what size are they what are the pricing so I was able to get a lot of information before I ever published my book just by doing a little research and so when I got that I had content that was different and presented in a different way, I should say. And it was it, it's met their reasons of why they wanted to buy because all the, my back cover copy gave them that reason, gave them those reasons. So when you're, you're buying, you may think of the golden rule, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, forget that. Think about the platinum rule of do unto others as they would do unto themselves. You're selling your book to help other people. Not You can't go into a, a meeting with a corporate buyer and say that, you know, you really got to buy this book because I have to make my uh, mortgage payment this month. You know, that's that's not going to sell a lot of books. But if you go in there and show them how your your content can help them sell a lot more of their product, then, then you're you're doing unto what they want. <laughs> At any rate, let's think about the – just a little bit of a twist on the, the golden rule. So here's how to find out why people buy. And what I do is create a call a par statement where it's the, the problem. What, what is the problem people have? What would what would cause somebody to seek the information in your book? Remember that initial slide that I showed that what's the consumer thinking about? Well, they're thinking about their problems and where to get a, a, a solution to that. So you want to talk about the the solutions that the actions that people can take to get that result. So when they when they read your book, they benefit by it more than they would by something else. So that this is the, the create this par statement. Now here's an example of a book that I wrote called How to Make Real Money Selling Books. This is about how to sell books to non-bookstore buyers. So authors want to make more money. That's so they're, they're looking for how can I make more money? And you're doing it by watching this book book selling university or taking this book selling university course. But in my book, I describe how to sell more books in large quantities to these non-bookstore buyers. And the result is that the author becomes more profitable selling more books, larger quantities, non-returnable. So that's what that's that's what they want. They're becoming more successful, more profitable, making more money. But now, what about who else could wants to make more money? <laughs> so I thought maybe a printer. They want if they print more books and longer print runs, then they're making more money too. So what if they bought my book and gave it to their clients or prospective clients as a gift or maybe using it at, at trade shows? And then they would give it out. I actually had a, a printer that, that purchased the rights to buy my to, to print my book. So when they would go to trade shows, people wanted to see a sample of their quality. I wrote a book called It's Showtime about how to perform on TV and radio shows. So this printer 
printed up these books and gave them to people. So it demonstrated their quality of printing, but also gave them information that they could use. But for these are authors at these trade shows, so they or publishers. So they got information about how to perform and sell more books on the air. So the, the, they, when people are selling more books, then the printers are printing more books. So they, see the, this is a way that you can look at different segments and create this par statement for each of these segments so they understand more and they're, they're, they're doing it, making it a better world. So let's look at the second topic right now. Just when you take a, before we get into this, just take a five second break. <laughs> Give me a chance to get a little water here too. One benefit of Book Selling University is that you can view these courses multiple times, so you don't have to go through it all at once. You may just look at the section on target definition first, and then come back to it and look at, think about the segmentation. Maybe take some time and go through that handout and define your target reader before you actually go through this segment, which might be a good idea for you. So let's look at segmentation, which is you have all these potential buyers, you know, who else can buy it, you know, where they shop, you know, what they're looking for, but you want, you have, you want to put them in groups based upon why they buy their similar needs, or maybe by the way they sell. We have retailers that are one segment that you market to them in a different way than you would to, to non-retail buyers. So you have these groups of people, that is what market segmentation is of creating those different groups. So what is a market segment? Well, it's a group of these people that are have these same needs. So the segmentation is creating the segments, and the segments are groups that are have similar purchasing needs, purchasing uh, procedures, and that. So when you contact them, you're, you're contacting the retailers to that you can help them build more store traffic and help showing the library librarians who don't care about that how they can help their patrons. So the different strategies that some authors use, one is the undifferentiated targeting. That's you know, selling to everybody. That's uh, you know, that's where I started out, selling to my job search books to bookstores and found out that's not the right thing to do. But this is not that's not the best way to sell. But the idea is that it's concentrated target, concentrated targeting where you have maybe one very large sector or segment and other ancillary segments. So you want to concentrate on the on the best opportunity, the largest opportunity, before you hit some of the other ones, or maybe uh, rank them, A, B, and C prospects, which uh, I'll show you how to do that in a different uh, book selling university course. The idea is that you can also go to a multi-segment targeting where you have a variety of different groups in which to which you can sell. And here's some examples of what I mean by the, the multi-segment targeting, but the, the uh, concentrated targeting might be the spiritual bookstores, or maybe the marriage counselors, or the yoga center. These are the where you, you have the largest opportunities. We do this for our clients, where we create these circles, and we think that the size of the circle indicates the potential revenue stream or the profitability that can be generated by by reaching these people. So the my you have this book on a spiritual topic. You may think, well, people. I'm not, you know, sell it through Amazon because people are looking for spiritual books. And but if, if you go to forget Amazon, forget Barnes and Noble, but go to spiritual bookstores or go to meditation groups or go to retreats and get them to to buy your book in large quantities. And when people come to their their website, they get a free copy of your book. Or if they sign up for a retreat, they get a free copy of your book as a thank you. The, cons the counselors, maybe parent groups, are looking at to help their become better parents. So they have a different reason for buying it than somebody that has an anger management <laughs> anger management group. So the more that you can organize these people, and again, you may create the size of which would be a different, uh, the size would be a different opportunity for it. Same with uh, for children's books, that you're selling these people to, to the uh, the moms groups or to the daycare centers or PTAs as a fundraiser or homeschooling. So you don't just think of public schools, think of the military schools, or think of homeschooling or the daycare centers, depending on the age to which you, uh, your book, your content is directed. But what if you go to schools and you may be thinking of K-8 or the secondary schools? And so let's, let's look at that as one way to even bring it down even further. And so you have the the academic niche 
and I looked at it for a job search book. I wasn't going to sell it to K-8 or preschool, and uh, but I could do it to <coughs> you know, post-secondary. So I look at the college market as an opportunity, as the, the, the post-secondary segment looking for jobs. So I sold it to alumni associations, used it as a fundraiser. The teachers used it as a supplementary text or as a, actually as a text. I thought, who wants a college student to get a job more than the student does? Well, the parents. So I got a list of the parents of graduating college seniors and sent them a direct mail program that was very successful. They had the opportunity, the, the means, and they had the desire to get the kids a job and out of the house, which is one of the reasons I wrote it, because I had the kids about to graduate from college. Anyway, then take it even further that now the students are there and, and you can market to them differently than you would to the teachers or the alumni associations. And you, con you go to the social uh, networking or the, I did a lot of personal presentations. I contacted the National American uh, Marketing Association and got the list of the uh, parent or the presidents of the, the campus chapters and sold books to them in large quantities, or case, case quantities, so they could use it to uh, as a fundraiser. So one of the, some of the characteristics of, of a segment, one, it should be unique. It's something that is different from, from other segments. And so the, the daycare centers are buying books or using books differently than the, the PTAs, but it could be the same book, but it's different. Each segment is different the needs of that. You have, you have a product uh, for that, have a benefit for that segment. Again, I didn't have a product for the K-8 or for the, day, or the, the um, preschool, but I did have it for the high school or for the the college market, the trade schools, and those. So I have I have a, a product for that. It's measurable. There are there are eight hundred eight million unemployed people when I first came out with my book. So I was able to to understand the, the magnitude of that. And my first marketing, my first business plan was eight million times fourteen ninety five, fourteen dollars ninety five cents. I soon learned that that was not going to happen. Is it accessible? You reach these people efficiently. I did the direct mail program to the parents of, of the college students while also contacting the colleges to buy those booklets to give to the students. Then is it substantial? Is it large enough to, to be profitable? I saw one book, the title was How to Start Your Own Country. And probably not a, a large segment, a, a profitable segment. Maybe I'm not sure they sold one book to CIA and one book to the FBI. But uh, that was not a large group of people who want to start their own country. But interesting topic. What are some of the benefits of this? You know, why should you go through all this? Well, you think of force you to think of new opportunities. You're always thinking about the who else and where else and why else. And then and you organize these people based upon their needs. So when they I did a uh, direct mail pro program to librarians and the subject line was this book is two years overdue it would not have made any other sense to a librarian it wouldn't make any sense to a retailer or to a, a tv producer so the, the, you're writing your uh, press releases your marketing material your uh, tv radio shows have different uh, content on those so you're promoting based on that on their needs, and you're selling according to their procedures. You know that the retailers sell, buy through distributors and wholesalers, so that's the way you do that. Your competition is reduced because most other authors and publishers are not doing that, and books are not. Your competition is right next to you on the shelf. When you contact a corporate buyer, your your yours is the only book and vision that that that, that they can see. So that you're. Marketing is more effective and more efficient because you're reaching people based upon their reasons for buying it, the, the, the platinum rule. You can become that segment leader. When I first came out with my book, I was looking, I was always uh, selling against that, what color is your parachute book? <laughs> and uh, so I, I, that was in bookstores. Well, every bookstore said, how is your book different from what color is your parachute? Well, I came up with reasons, and but I, I contact, when I contact some of these other segments, like the parents group or, or the, the the textbooks, I was able to create a leadership position here because I was the only one calling on them and selling the books uh, the books to them. So you can uh, create brand extensions like I showed you before, the videos, the booklets, the, 
the ebooks, the uh, Hispanic uh, topics, the brand extensions. We're taking the the brand and, and creating workshops and seminars for the corporations and for other job search groups. Uh, I was able to come in as the market leader, the segment leader with reduced competition. They can make more money selling that because I was able to get that brand loyalty. So these are some of the types of ways or reasons why you can uh, be more effective. So let's let's look at the different types of segmentation. Could be the uh, demographic, obviously. The, we talked about before of the women 24 to 40 or, or 40 to, uh, to 60. That, that's examples of the demographics. Uh, for business demographics, you have maybe the, could be having your book sold to, to bankers or to uh, healthcare companies or to car dealerships or to um, um, food manufacturers. So the, you can segment these people vertically by market or horizontally by uh, position. Could be just by HR. Who go, so your book is on motivation. So it could be applicable to any particular industry. Geographic, that uh, you might think about the books or the in airport stores. Books on the East Coast airports are more related to Europe. On the West Coast, the more the Far East destinations. On the Gulf Coast, the more the Hispanic locations. So, or maybe books more in Spanish. So if you know where your content is, is applicable, the language of that, or the, the buyers of that, I should say, then you can be more specific. When you go to an airport store, you can tell them that you have books on these, on, on the, the European destinations, or, or that, that's why they should have them in the, the East Coast airport stores. So the more you can help the buyers be successful, the more likely they are to have you in there too, in, in their, uh, on, on their shelves. Marketing segmentation, when you send, when I showed you those, the 24 to 40 and 40 to 60, they both groups had reviews and awards, but they had different different reviews and awards. They want their, their product in different form and different channels, uh, different distributions. That's where they're going to be buying it. So that's, that's, that's the, the major benefit of resulting, the result to you for doing all this. And first time buyers, am I, they, they're looking more about what what do you have to offer and why does it benefit me with the, the frequent buyers are these people that are uh, looking to, to purchase may place a blanket order which is a corporation may be implementing a sales campaign and buy your book and every quarter they'll buy x thousand of, of your books so they you want to be able to show them the benefits of buying in, in larger quantities or more frequently by profit potential that the, all these people buy for different reasons. They, the bookstores buy small quantities, so they're looking for larger discounts. They also have returns where the corporations are large quantities and larger discounts, but they're, they're also non-returnable. So the more that you can understand the, the profit pro potential by these groups, then you can, that's the, the size of that circle in your market map that has the, uh, shows you the uh, priority of that particular segment. So type more more types, the benefits, groups, or customers that um, that uh, from the benefits they seek, the, uh, the PTA is looking as a fundraiser, an association looking as perhaps as a fundraiser, where a daycare center is looking at it perhaps to resell, just to to, to read to the kids, or maybe we, setting up a we do this for our clients. We set up a uh, a library in a hospital of children's books, and they just they read to the kids. The parents and nurses read to the kids and. Kids take the book home with it. They just add it to their bill. The seasonal segmentation uh, could be the fourth quarter holiday Christmas uh, season, or it could be the March, April, May, uh, May, June, July, Mother's Day, and graduation day, and Father's Day segments. So the, the seasonal is is could be very big for that. The not going to be if you have a book that's for uh, state parks, you probably won't be selling it. <laughs> in the wintertime up here in New England that because they're all closed. So let's just give you some idea about the seasonal types of segmentation. So look at the, the corporate sell, sales, uh, or the, the retailers. These are the retailers looking at you know, why their question when you contact them, why should I put your book on my shelf? You know, who's the typical reader 
and is your typical reader one of my customers or my customer base? So we show them what kind of promotion you're doing. When you do your present your proposal to a retailer for a distributor to a retailer, the bulk of it is about your promotion and the, the differences and the target description. That's what they're looking for. Maybe have some competitive comparisons, particularly on pricing, so they'll know what they're getting into. And just a, a uh, information about you as the expert on the topic. So find out the, the distributors. This is one you might want to go to. The CIMAC uh, is a distributor to discount stores, a variety of stores, supermarkets, pharmacies, uh, department stores, dollar stores. So this is a, a good opportunity for you to uh, get that distribution to these. So the more that, that you have the retailers, they're not selling to all retailers. They're selling to those specific ones. So they're not looking, uh, they not, won't be selling to business stores, like to the Staples, for example. So you find out who the distributors are because you know the five W's of your retailers, who they are, what, when, where, why they, they buy. And then you create the distribution for each retail segment. And it could, could be airport stores will buy from different uh, uh, distributors, or they may buy from different distributors and wholesalers and then camera stores. And if selling to uh, pet stores, might go to the Pet Industry Distributors Association to, to find out who their members are. So it gives you a list of all the distributors for pet stores, health stores. It could, you know, Nutribooks. You go to these people that, they, as long as you know who the retail group is, then you find the right distribution partner for that particular group. Then you do your, your PAR statement for retailers. What, what problem do they have? They want the store traffic. The action is that you have heavy promotion that will get more people into their stores. And the result is the fact they will sell more books and sell more product, get more store traffic and, and more profit per square foot. So that's the, the PAR statement and the, res, the result that you will demonstrate to them. But non-retail is different. They're, they're, they're different needs, different opportunities. They're, they're looking to buy certainly different customers. They're looking to buy for different reasons. These are not for resale. This is for getting people to, to buy more of their books, so you're, they're more of their products. So they're using your, your book as a promotional tool, as a gift with purchase, as an ad specialty, something that will, that will help them sell more of their product. But you've got to let them know that you've, that you, that why did you use a book as a promo item or w that you are familiar with their company and their industry? You know who their competitors are. You know why your book can help them be more successful because you have to have those answers before they'll listen to why that you should sell to them. So again, you look at your five W's and, and how do they buy? Who, what, where, when, why, what, what they're buying. They're buying books as uh, as premium items, as promotional items, how do they buy? They're, they're buying through, and I'll show you these, the uh, how companies use books on the next slide. But you know, how do they buy? Well, they're buying from you directly. They're buying when you or your your representative, your agent contacts them, then they buy that. But you want to know who they are. Are they just bankers? Are they just healthcare companies? And, and that if your content is more appropriate to that, you may have a book, a coloring book that's uh, about banks. Well, banks could buy that because when the parents come in to talk about their home mortgage, well, you give the coloring book to the kids. And when the kids are happy, the parents are happy. And the color, and so it's, they have your the bank logo on it. You may have a book about how to get a first mortgage or how to get a business loan or how to, how to get a college loan. And the banks could be a very good target for that. So you, the more that you know about that, but then you want to know about how they can use it. It might just be a gift, giving a coloring book to the kid or the, or the child. Uh, but there are corporate libraries. I work with a, a company that the uh, Fortune 250 company with, uh, for whom I work had a library, had a librarian in, in there. Could be an, an award. You may have a, a, a picture book that's a very exp expensive uh, coffee table book. Well, the companies would buy that as an, uh, an award for uh, the employees or maybe a contest, a, a prize for a sales contest. I did that. I was a sales rep and a sales trainer, sales manager for Xerox many years ago. And we won a lot of these prizes that we had for trips or for other events, uh, that just uh, monthly campaigns. We had prizes per month, and it was fun to get the, these different things. So the gift with purchase could be a great opportunity. When somebody buys a, a product, they get a gift as a thank you. That's, or an association may do the same thing. When you join the association, you get a free gift, uh, your book as a thank you for doing that. 
So these are all different ways in which companies can use your product. So to go through this par statement also that has this uh, the problem that they want to sell more, the companies want to sell more of an existing product. And they can use your book as a gift with purchase. And the result is they have more profitable sales increase. So not just a sales increase, they get a profitable sales increase by doing that. Where an association, their objective is to increase membership. So they can use your book as a thank you when people join or renew their membership. And the result is they get more revenue for the, their association, more revenue, more membership, uh, and, and more dues revenue. The military wants to get the service person to re-enlist. So they want to make sure that the family is happy. So they show the spouse how to change careers with, with uh, frequent moves. And a happy family means more re-enlistment. So the idea is that, again, you have the different segments, the different needs of people. So you organize them by group and market to the result of what they want. We'll have a whole uh, webinar, a whole uh, Book Selling University course on, on libraries. So, and, selling to libraries but they basically have two collections they have a or the types of libraries don't just think of public libraries think of the niche libraries of religious libraries and law libraries and hospital libraries and the school libraries so there there are like 120,000 libraries in the u.s only 16,000 of those are public libraries so expand asking again who else can use the information in your book as far as the co collections go all libraries aren't going to buy all books they have a core, core C-O-R-E collection that is the top 10 fiction, nonfiction books, the, the reference books. But they have what's called a patron-driven collection. And that's different for librarians. The urban libraries will have a different uh, patron-driven collection than will the suburban or the rural, rural libraries. So you want to find out where your your content would be most applicable to libraries, and that's where you contact them. And so you, you don't want to waste your time contacting all, all different libraries. So we have, again, we have an old book selling university uh, hour long course on selling to libraries. Now I just want to talk about uh, what, what I call a market map. It's, I took the concept of, of mind mapping and created a market map for that, where we have taking these segments and the next step is finding the actual buyers in each. So if you have a business book, for example, you would like to look at the different types of, uh, of book clubs or bookstores for, uh, for entrepreneurs, online stores, or maybe library distributors or uh, distributors to corporate libraries or book clubs for, for women in business or maybe associations. If you have books about uh, women in business or, or minorities, then you go to these organizations or associations for that or um, business school organizations. Here, the, the niche markets will be different. It could be sales trainers or the, the conferences will be different than there would be for other books. So what we do is go to these. Here you have the, the different types of retail store chains as the information for contacting them. So we this is the prospect list based upon that segment. So you have your segment. Now you come up with all different prospects in that segment. And it's something that the, uh, the different organizations for um, women and minorities have this. National Association of Women Business Owners, and go to the different chapters for that. So here's the, the geographic segmentation we looked at before, the Wisconsin Women's, the, the Tennessee Minority Supplier Development Council. So these are all, the, you find out the different groups and associations for business. That doesn't have any uh, impact for romance books. So say your book is about romance. So you might want to contact the, the romance book catalogs online or hospital gift shops or romance book clubs or romance bookstores that they have just that just sell uh, romance uh, titles or romance books, uh, romance bookstores online that they have obviously just sell romance books online. See how quick I am here. <laughs> what about companies that could could use could sell your books as a um uh, as a gift with purchase. Maybe Victoria's Secret on Valentine's Day has a promotion and if they buy X, if you buy X dollars of, of lingerie, you get a, a free romance novel with it. So that's the type of programs that you can put together once you know who the segments are, and the, their reasons for buying, and how you can help them sell more of their books. That doesn't work for a book on adoption, but if you go here, maybe you want to find uh, foster parent sites and the 
you, so you, you saw your, your book there, how to be a, a better foster parent or how to be, how to deal with the uh, foster child or how to, the, the, not pluses or minuses, but the, the things that need to be aware of for that. But different conferences, different uh, facilitators, different mailing lists. You can buy mailing lists just for adoption, uh, whether it be adoptive parents or the adoption services and suppliers. I'm just showing you a couple of these, too, obviously, the religious books and and the Christian titles that you have, the bookstores online, this kind of mail order catalogs, hospital gift shops could be the associations for for that. Um, the fundraising companies that do fundraising, different ministries. So the, the idea is that you find these niches, then you find the the different newsletters that you can contact, for example, that you that you uh, might do an article for them and have them do a review on your topic. But it all starts out with defining your reader, your readers and buyers, organizing them in groups, and then uh, putting them in finding out who the buyers are. In that. Amy Collins did a real good uh, course for Book Selling University about how you find these readers. I went through what, you know, who, what, where, when, why. And the uh, how to, Amy talks about how to do the market research to find those. Some of those sites I showed you online, and she goes through that, how to find them, where to find them, and how to, how to use them, which is the more, more important thing. So you're more successful in what you're doing. So thank you for attending Book Selling University Course 101 about how to define your target readers and buyers. And let me know if you have other questions about that. We'll be coming up with new uh, variations of this, uh, not variations, but up, updated programs over the course of the years. And we'll include more of your questions and information in that. But uh, you can call me or email me or go to the website and we'll take, we'll help you whatever we can. So thank you for again for joining me in this course. And I wish you great success selling your books and to your specific target readers and buyers.